Bob Arum just had a whole lot to say about what Shakur Stevenson went through leading up to his fight with De La Santos, where he put on a poor performance. Also, Bob Arum finally opens up and talks about a potential fight going down in 2024 with Javante Davis and Shakur Stevenson and where that fight will likely take place. Before we get into all of this, make sure that you hit my like button, subscribe to the channel if you're not already sub, and let's cook. We all know, man, Shakur been one of the main topics in boxing because he probably one of the most hated fighters in all of boxing. Shakur faced De La Santos. He ain't put on a good performance after the fight. He didn't want to make no excuses, but fans and trolls all around the boxing world, man, they went in on Shakur. And, you know, if you know boxing, you can see that Shakur Stevenson, he wasn't himself on that night, right? You could clearly look at him and tell that he wasn't using his left hand and he is a southpaw. So that's his power hand. He really didn't use it throughout the whole fight. I might have counted maybe five times that he threw it and three of those times was in the last round. Shakur clearly looked like something was wrong with his left hand or, you know, his left shoulder. Right. So Shakur clearly looked like something was wrong with him because he wasn't throwing that left. Now, like I said, he didn't make no excuses, but the fans was on his helmet. The fans were saying that they would never pay to watch him fight again, which they ain't pay to watch him fight because the fight was free on ESPN and ESPN Plus if you subscribe to it. You know what I'm talking about? So I don't know what the hell they was talking about, but they were saying they don't never want to watch Shakur Stevenson fight again. But saying that while talking about him every single day. So we know as soon as Shakur Stevenson announces that he has his next fight coming up, everybody going to be tuned in. You got the ones that's going to be tuned in to watch him lose because he's hated. And you got the other ones that's going to be tuned in just because they want to see what type of performance he's going to put on. But Shakur, he wasn't happy with his performance either. And he apologized to Bob Arum. He apologized to Floyd Mayweather, to Andre Ward, to Terrence Crawford. If you listen to Shakur leading up to the fight, he was telling people when they asked him, well, how you going to look in this fight? What you going to do? And he was like, you know, I, I, I'm just going to get the win. And that's exactly what he did. He went out there and he did what he had to do to get the win. And truthfully, I never seen somebody criticize so much in a fight that they won. We forgetting he actually won the fight and he actually set a record. De La Santos set a record for the least amount of punches landed in a 12 round championship fight. But I also understand that heavy is the head that wears the crown. And when you talk a whole lot of shit like Shakur Stevenson does, and he ain't afraid to let everybody know, can't nobody F with him in the sport of boxing. He believes that he's the best, like he should believe. Well, you got a whole lot of people, they don't like that confidence. They're going to hate you for that, right? And they're going to expect you to back up every word that you say every single time you step in the ring right they don't just expect you to win they expect you to win in spectacular fashion but like i always tell people the great thing about this a lot of people talk like shakur stevenson's career is done he ain't gonna never fight again but shakur is gonna be back and he gonna have a chance to shut everybody the hell up and then he gonna have another chance he gonna continue to have chances throughout his whole career so heavy is the head that wears the crown this is what comes with the territory. We're in a new day and age and fans can get on social media and say whatever they want at any given time. So this is the things that you're going to have to deal with. Shakur is not exempt to having to deal with these things. And I think he realizes this also. And he's promised that he won't put on a performance like that. And it doesn't matter who he's in the ring with. And I believe him because, you know, I mean, sometimes fighters athletes whatever sport you in you don't have your best night and sometimes you do have to battle through injury now this is what bob arum had to say about shakur stevenson in his last performance i'm gonna play this and then we're gonna come back and i'm gonna talk about it and i'm also gonna cook on what he had to say about potential fight between shakur stevenson and gervonta tank davis listen to what bob had to say first about shakur stevenson's last performance 
Well, that always happens, you know. I've been, I've been, I have such a history of uh, boxing promoting superstars, and sometimes for one reason or another, they don't live up to their billing. Now, in Shakur's case, he had ailments because he trained over, I think, over trained. He loves to be in the gym. Uh, he hurt his hand, he hurt his shoulder, and, and our office was constantly taking him to different doctors to patch him up. So I don't think uh, uh, DeSantis is a pretty good fighter, but I don't think uh, we saw the best of, I know we saw, didn't see the best of Shakur. And indeed, the kid called me up uh, the morning after the fight uh, to apologize for his performance. But I quite understand what was happening because for the weeks leading up to the fight, uh, we didn't know if he could even make the fight. Now, y'all heard what Bob had to say about Shakur Stevenson's last performance. Now, of course, you got the ones that hate Shakur, that was just watching to see him lose, that are Javante Davis diehard fans that don't like him because they run with Tank, or they don't like him because they Devin Haney fanatics. And y'all treat this like it's gang warfare. Like y'all can't like all of these fighters. But we know that the first thing that they're going to say is, oh, Bob Arum is lying for Shakur Stevenson. He's making excuses. And that's why a lot of these fighters, if they're hurt and they know that they were hurt coming into the fight, they don't want to say that during the post fight interview because they know the backlash that they're going to get. I mean, you got these delusional fans out here that think it's impossible for a fighter to get hurt during training camp. Shakur Stevenson, he not only did his training camp, he did Bud Crawford's full training camp with him. And the man trained from April all the way to November nonstop. So when you're going that hard, of course, it's going to be very easy to sustain a lot of injuries. And Bob don't have no reason to lie. And you could clearly see that Shakur was injured, like I said, because you can't pull up not one fight where Shakur Stevenson didn't throw his left. You know, that's his power hand. He is a southpaw. But like Roger Mayweather once said, a lot of people don't know shit about boxing. And a lot of these fans running around, running their mouth now, y'all don't know shit about boxing. But I guarantee you, your favorite fighter know a lot about boxing. And your favorite fighter is not going to jump to get in the ring with Shakur Stevenson. They going to make all the excuses in the world like he going to run and he going to do this. Well, if he going to run, make sure that you know how to cut the ring off then. If he going to be boring, well, then make sure you beat his boring ass. See, fighters know better. Real boxing fans know better. But a lot of these new casual boxing fans, they don't know shit. They just run in their mouth. Now, this is what Bob Arum had to say about a potential fight between Shakur Stevenson and Javante Davis. We're open to any of that. And uh, the way it'll probably happen, the way everything is happening, is the Saudis, who uh, uh, the guy in charge, His Excellency Turkey Al Al Sheikh, uh, is a big boxing fan and reads all of the stuff that comes out around the world about boxing, including your column. And so when he reads this, he may decide that he wants to do that fight in Saudi after Ramadan and uh, do it this summer, one of those fights, uh, and cut the checks to the fighters. And that, that, that ends any kind of discussion of who gets what percentage? Uh, well, uh, we got the blueprint for Tank. And, uh, can't nobody in Saudi Arabia, I don't care if it's Arabia or Saudi, can't nobody offer Javante Tank Davis anything. Uh, we dictate all the terms. And, uh, you know, like I've told y'all before, we got the blueprint for Tank. And, uh, Tank is a special fighter. So when it comes to Javante Davis, he will continue to sell out arenas. He will continue to be a mega, mega superstar. We don't need Saudi Arabia to make a big event for Javante Tank Davis. Uh, Tank Davis is the event. And quite frankly, Javante Davis, he'll get to all these guys. You know, 
He gonna fight all these guys that y'all been asking for. But the fights are not ready right now. So it don't matter if it's in Saudi Arabia, Arabia, Saudi. We'll let y'all know because Tank dictates all the terms. Well, we know pretty much how Leonard Ellaby feel about a fight taking place between Gervonta Tank Davis and Shakur Stevenson over in Saudi Arabia. They got the mega, mega billions. You know what I'm saying? They could put on the fight between these two and pay both of these fighters very, very handsomely. They could give Gervonta Tank Davis more money than he ever made before, and they could give Shakur Stevenson more money than he ever made before. But do I think it's going to happen? No. And I just told y'all why in Leonard Ellaby's voice. Y'all let me know how y'all feel about this. Make sure that y'all drop a comment in the comment section. Make sure that y'all hit my like button. Subscribe to the channel. And y'all already know how I do. Tango talking that boxing again. And I'm gone. Right, right. Got the top down. Lean into the right.